Hey, this is David Walensky, back with another interview from the audio archives of Don't Die. This time I'm bringing to you the first half of my conversation with Peter Olofsson, who's a writer and critic who was most active in the 90s. Uh, we spoke on January 13th, 2017, and if you'd like to read other transcripts of interviews I've done, uh, you can go over to nodontdie.com. Uh, also, you'll see a link to my Patreon, where your support helps me continue my work on this project. Uh, otherwise, thanks for listening, and now, here's Peter Olofsson. Okay. Um, my name is Peter Olofsson, O-L-A-F-S-O-N. A lot of people get it wrong, so forgive me for spelling it. Um, I'm 61, and I live in Southern California, uh, La Jolla specifically. Um, and I... Let's see. I, I started writing about games in the late 80s, uh, sort of by accident. I was, um, at the time, I was working for a, a newspaper in the, the uh, sort of the outer suburbs of New York City and um, wasn't very happy there um, and was wasn't specifically casting about for something else to do, but I I had um, at the time uh, my computer was a uh, a Commodore Amiga 500, and I had uh, bought the game. Um, uh, I believe it was called uh, War of the Rings, which was uh, originally an 8-bit game for the C64 and Spectrum and I think a few other platforms by um, Mike Singleton who had who wound up doing so many other um, interesting games like uh, 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 well right now I can't think of this I was inspired to think of one title but I'm I'm um, I'm not I'm not quite getting it but um, this this wasn't a Mike Singleton game, however. Um, Synergistic Software revised it for um, uh, 16-bit machines, and uh, the result was sort of a a hybrid of several styles of game, which Synergistic would go on to uh, you know expand upon over the course of its, its long career. Um, I think as most recently as, as the Sierra game Birthright that they did. That is to say, just doing a single game that comprehends many things mm -hmm. uh, and many, many styles of play. Um, and I admired the game, uh, you know, uh, that I saw, but I also had a lot of complaints about it. Uh, and uh, for you know, I, I didn't expect it to be published. I didn't expect an answer even. But I I I wrote. I, I was a movie reviewer for the the newspaper for for a number of years. And much as I had done movie reviews, I sort of assembled a a game review and uh, sent it to Amiga World magazine, which was uh, based up in Peterborough, New Hampshire. I didn't know anyone there or anything. It was just sort of a shot in the dark. But And they'd already assigned the review, it turned out. But they, they liked what I'd written, and they invited me to uh, uh, to try it again, basically, you know, with the, you know to, to, to do other reviews for them for print, uh, which was fine with me. So I, I started doing that. Um, this would have been... Oh, a, a, sometime between 87 and 89. Uh, probably, you know, and I, so I mean, I, I kept working as a newspaper reporter, but I was also doing um, re game reviews, and then, then eventually I became a columnist for them, uh, writing a, a kind of hints column. Um, and uh, by you know by 
that by like late in '89, I'd uh, I was I was doing enough work for them on a consistent basis uh, that I could begin to think of uh, leaving the paper and uh, going on to do you know um, other work in this same field, uh, which I was you know. By the early 90s, uh, I, I left the paper at, at the end of 89. And uh, by the early 90s, uh, I was being invited to uh, to uh, write for other publications because uh, I, I make a world was owned by IDG, which which was a uh, – I don't know if it still is, but it, I, yeah, it probably is. But it, it, it was a big computer magazine publisher. And uh, – they also did a, uh, a magazine called PC Games, which no longer exists. Um, and I believe GamePro is also theirs, uh, which I think does exist. But I'm, I, again, I'm not sure. I've been I've been sort of out of the loop so long. Um, let me think. And so it, it sort of, you know, I sort of stumbled into it. Basically, I, I wasn't, I, it wasn't, it wasn't a concerted attempt at a, at a new type of writing or a new type of career. It was just uh, dissatisfaction with what I was doing where I was, and uh, the feeling that I could uh, could do more and and you know different work. Um, and so circa. Oh, ninety one. I guess you would say I was I was you know writing uh, for a number of different magazines and and getting invitations to write for um, the earliest of you know the websites which which were beginning to spring up then because this was internet really didn't exist quite yet but it was it was you know you had you had big sites like uh, Genie and CopyServe and Portal, and uh, I'm not even naming like you know the, the you know ones like AOL and so on, but they were they were um, it, these were the early days of uh, of, of of the net, and uh, there, there were opportunities there. So I was I was busy all of a sudden, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, much to my surprise, but uh, you know, uh, was there anything else on, on that score that you wanted me to cover? Oh on? no, no, that that's perfect. I mean, um, yeah, it was, it's basically just for for people who maybe are not familiar with your byline or your name, just to sort of have a context for the sort of stuff that we're gonna be. Uh, talking about, and um, I wasn't quite sure where we would start or where we would dive in up top, but I guess I'll mention this because you you hadn't uh, just maybe by virtue of the timeline, but um, you also you know you did a lot of writing for the uh, New York Times about video games. I guess in the late nineties. That was that was no that was later. That was yeah uh, two thousand two thousand just two thousand one. Well, can you can you talk a little bit about sort of how that came about? Um, you know, why the New York Times sort of started caring about video games? How you got hooked well, in with them? That that I don't exactly know because uh, I wasn't the first. There were, um, and I, I wasn't alone. Actually, I was I was doing it in in uh, I was alternating with um, another writer named Charles Harold. Oh, I've also interviewed him. That's right. Okay. Uh, but um, let me. There's a lot of space in there. Right. Uh, but I'll try to fill it up, you know, briefly. Uh, let me just close the door. The cats are kind of running in out here, and it's <laughs> uh, not a, a problem. Little distracting. Just That's okay. one sec. Not a problem. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, what base? What happened? As a result of, of all this freelance work, was that um, in '98 I was offered um, a, a job, you know, in house as as a, a, I think initially it was as a news editor for PC Games magazine, 
um, who I, I, Amico will eventually want, you know, I, I, I think things accelerated, basically. It, it's, it's a little hard to, hard to think of how best to tell this, but, but basically Amico Roll was my main gig at, at, at the beginning. And, uh, but, uh, w- once Commodore went into liquidation, um, the, the, the magazine, you know, didn't have, uh, It was it was going to be a difficult time because I mean nobody was was making the Amiga anymore, um, and it was, so uh, he, he, effectively it was a magazine about a well the, the the computer wasn't dead or anything there were, there were a lot of you know it had a lot of fans and people continued to play games and indeed in in England and in Europe in general it, con- it continued to do well into the mid 90s um but uh it was in the u.s it was a problem um and um so circa i think it was i think it was january of 95 was the last issue and that you know it's a difficult position to be in when when your main gig suddenly goes south so I, um, but but there was always there was always other stuff to do. I was I was you know, um, <laughs> there always seemed to be somebody else to write for in those days. So, and I'd started doing books, uh, game guides. Mm-hmm. I'd just done a couple of them, um, which I think both came out. The first couple came out in, I think I think ninety five. And uh, so I, I was able to sort of, you know, take up the slack that way. Uh, and uh, by by '98, as I said, I had uh, I was was finally invited to uh, come on staff at PC Games um, as news editor, and uh, moved to California as a result of that. I was. Uh, Myself and, and uh, was living with my wife in uh, in uh, northern New Jersey at that time. And um, let me think. Uh, of course, you know, uh, it didn't exactly work out. I mean, it was it was it was uh, the magazine was. Basically, I think there were about the were about four main computer game magazines in those days, and the two big ones, the ones that were the most successful, were um, PC Gamer and Computer Gaming World. And I believe I, I, I'm not I can't trust my memory on this entirely because, as I said, it's been so long. But yeah. PC Games essentially was the third magazine in a, uh, in a two magazine race, and so it, early in '99 uh, it went under, and um, they they much to my surprise they they pretty much everybody got got let go, but they kept me and one other editor on, and when the other editor left, I was pretty much it. So, um, and what I was doing then was trying to sort of run a website based on the ashes of, of PC games, um, and, you know, doing some writing, doing some editing, uh, but it was, it was, uh, let's put it this way. and eventually it 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 found a, a direction uh in in terms of uh, it stopped being pc games and it and it uh became uh, uh i think it was basically variations of of gamepro.com 
using the game pro name instead of the PC games name, which had been, uh, I, th- I, th- I think the PC games name wound up being sold to somebody. Um, and probably PC gamer, but th- again, that's, that's just my recollection. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <sighs> forgive me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to put, it's, it's a lot of ground at, to sort of, you know, before we get to the times, which, which I need to fill in. Um, and in, in that period, I was, uh, uh, you know, through, throughout the remainder of 99, I was, uh, uh, basically management. I was, you know, I was, uh, running a, uh, the PC and um, hardware elements of of that uh, of that website, which became a very big site, um, but uh, I decided by the end of the year, for you know, for a variety of reasons, that management wasn't exactly for me. It was it was I, I wasn't doing as much writing. I was you know trying trying to come up with. Um, something that would set us apart from from other websites. Uh, I, I one of us I was, was looking. Uh, how to put it? Um, yeah, you know, it, it it it's not it's not it's almost not worth going into because I didn't I didn't uh, really I didn't achieve what I wanted to. But um, at the end of 99, or the beginning of uh, 2000, I left. Uh, because uh, pre- pre- there were a variety of reasons, but but basically um, management wasn't... I wasn't suited for management. Uh, I was, you know, I what I enjoyed was writing and editing. And... Um, I wasn't doing as much of those as I as I w- wanted to do, and I guess I, I sort of went back to freelancing for a few months in early 2000. Um, but uh, and then uh, I, sort of out of nowhere, um, I, mean, I, I didn't I didn't plot this really. Uh, I was invited to uh, to contribute um, a sort of s- a sample column for for the Times. Um, this and I try to remember what 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 I wrote it about. It was uh, it was a uh, I remember it was an Activision shooter. And uh, and I think it was it was distinctive in some sense because of the way it dealt with uh, damage, and it was it was a very um, visceral sort of game. Are you, where, you, are, know, you are you talking about I, Soldier of Fortune? Maybe. Uh, no, this was this was earlier than Soldier of Fortune. There was there was a, there was a series. It was. Um, Oh, hold it. You're right. I was, I was thinking Call of Duty, but you're right. So, yes, I think it was Soldier of Fortune. I remember you wrote a, a, a column about it and the, the violence in it. Yeah. Uh, I, I was trying to, to make the point, I don't think I was doing it very successfully, that um, violence uh, can be a way of Allowing the gamer to put his own stamp on a game, <laughs> which is which is one of the problems that I have with 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 gaming in general is that, you know, Peter's experience is pretty much like David's experience. Uh, <laughs> that that uh, that there's not things things don't you know. Um, it's pretty much always you know the same game. Um, and I was I was trying to make make the point that while I, I wasn't particularly happy about about the violence, but that it was one way 
to to make the games more individual because you know if if a body can be you know destroyed in a number of different ways then you know one of them is yours um well, so I'm sorry not to interrupt, but I mean, uh, I think this is something that comes up a lot. I mean, it certainly did in in, the, in that era as well as sort of the the criticism of of violence. And I think if you crit, if you criticize the violence today, I think you're sort of seen as a prude, even though like sort of fundamentally it's so omnipresent to the point of almost it's not even interesting anymore. Uh, what what sort of issues are you talking about that you sort of have with that uh, with violence in gaming? Back in the in the the late nineties, I did a an article about um, Bill Williams, and uh, Bill Williams was a, uh, a a very significant figure in the uh, the eight bit and sixteen bit era. He um, and one of the things that he mentioned when we chatted. Um, was that uh, he'd he'd come to he was a designer and he he'd come to realize that um, so much of what was being produced out there um, by um, I think the the mid to late nineties was killing simulators yeah uh, and uh, you know that of course conflict is an element in in storytelling it's it's indeed it's it's essential to it but there are all kinds of conflict um and there are all kinds of challenges and my feeling it wasn't so much that i was anti-violence i i could enjoy you know um going around and, and you know shooting monsters in in doom as much as anyone but uh mm-hmm. um i i simply wanted greater variety uh, you know, and uh, so you know, and and to be to be honest with you, they they're you know in 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 those days at, le- at least there there wasn't very much. There was, um, you know, there were there were there were a lot of. I, I wanted to, I wanted to see things develop that were it, 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 it's hard it's hard to figure out how to put this um, because I, 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 I sort of I don't want to lose the times thread that I was on yeah. so uh, if if I may could I just finish that transition that we can come back to this? absolutely yeah that's not a problem okay okay. Um, I uh, I was invited to uh, to sample a, 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 a send a sample column to the Times, and um, uh, I, in all honesty, um, I'm not sure how much this had to do with me, as it as it did with my wife, who who was uh, at the time uh, the uh, San Francisco bureau chief for the Times, and. Um, so uh, you know her her influence uh, I, I suspect had had a lot to had a lot to do with you know why I was offered it to begin with and and uh, uh, and maybe who knows you know it 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 probably helped me get it but um, in from roughly I think it was May of 2000 to the end of April uh, in 2001. Uh, I wrote, uh, uh, I alternated doing the game theory column for for the paper, uh, as I said, with, with Charles Harold, And uh, uh, until, um, this was in a section of the paper that no longer exists. It's called Circuits, uh, 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 C-I-R-C-U-I-T-S. And... Um, uh, I, I don't think circuits did very well. 
I don't think it attracted the level of advertising that they wanted. And eventually what they had to do is cut down to one writer. And uh, the one writer wasn't me. Uh, they, they, they decided... They decided to uh, to have uh, Charles do the column by himself, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, let me think. And uh, that was, you know, that was. Uh, I'm trying to remember what happened after that, but but anyway, anyway the uh, the. The the Times thing was. Um, what what else can I tell you about that? Hmm. Well, I guess uh, I guess it would be interesting to hear about the expectations you felt they had uh, for the section. I mean, f- for me, I it's don't, just. I don't... It, oh, I, I was just going to say, for me in general, it's just it's kind of interesting to see. Um, the places uh, where video games are sort of allowed to become a little bit more mainstream or sort of get equal play or attention as they do elsewhere and sort of, you know, what the thinking was behind it, sort of what the expectations were, sort of what any speed bumps may have been. Um, So, uh, I mean, nothing specific per se, but if any of that sort of, you know, offers a memory. The only only speed bump really was... (coughs) <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. Um, the only speed bump was was you know not doing it anymore. Um, the only there, there wasn't really much in the way of. Um, I mean, if the editors who whose whose vision for this uh, you know was was the significant one, um, how to put this. Mm-hmm. Um, I apologize. I'm not. I'm not. I don't feel very articulate. I'm afraid. Um, That's okay. We, the, I have. Pl- editors, I have plenty of time. Don't worry about it. The editors um, uh, who who ran that section, I, I don't think. I don't recall that they that they particularly shared, shared with me any insights about what they wanted. But uh, the fact was, I had a lot of freedom, um, as long as I. Coordinated with my fellow writer, you know what I want to do and what he wants to do, so we didn't wind up, you know, um, D- doing the same thing. <laughs> uh, you know, both wanting to do the same games, right? Uh, I, I was pretty much free to do, you know, what I pleased. Um, so they didn't seem to be trying to impose any any particular standard of. Uh, uh, you know, or 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 agenda. Uh, hmm. You know, I, it, it was just it was just, it was just an opportunity to uh, you know to do what I wanted, and that was and that was honestly uh, it felt pretty good because um, that's what that's eventually what had happened with Amiga World was that uh, uh, in Amiga World they eventually just. They made me games editor, and had me write the whole section by myself, which was, you know, uh, it was a great liberty, but uh, it was, a, you know, it was also a great opportunity. It was, um, uh, so. Well, so are you saying then, uh, you know, with uh, when you did stuff with the New York Times, I'm not going to dwell only on the New York Times. Um, are you saying that things didn't get sent back to you for revisions as often oh, or I'm compared sure, to elsewhere? I'm sure, the, I'm sure there were cases where they sent back things for for revision. Yeah. But I, I, I don't recall it being all that common. Um, With the New York you know, Times? They, they, I'm sorry? With the New York Times? No, no. Uh, you know, uh, indeed, in, in in general, uh, it's, it's that's not something that I particularly recall from my experience in those years. Yeah. Um, uh, which uh, I, I can't really explain except the fact that I had been a newspaper reporter for, <laughs> you know, for for ten years. Uh, so, and I I, I was a, a you know a, I have I have a master's in journalism, so I, I've you know, I've been around, and I I I I knew how things worked, 
and uh, you know, the, I, I, ideally, I mean, you don't want to have your story sent back to no. questions. <laughs> so, so it was, it was an opportunity, you know. Well, I ask only was, just in terms of, uh, you know, it, that's another way for there to be sort of scrutiny uh, on on what's going out there, or, or whether there's another agenda that you might not be aware of. Well. I'm, I, I wasn't aware of any. Of any. I, I, I don't, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's my my own agenda, which which you know se seem to I, I seem to be able to to uh, to uh, I was just trying to write about things that um, interested me. On an ongoing basis, you know. So, so I, I didn't want I didn't want the column to become, you know. Um, there's so many games out there for so many platforms. There always have been, and uh, it would be very easy to, you know, I mean, I, to just go out and and write something about something and and. You know, it's done, and and you know, you liked it, you didn't like it, but I felt more that with a, a a large, you know, with so many games and so many platforms, it was incumbent upon me to try, try to find things that people would like, or that I hope, at least that I hope they would like. So my, my agenda, if I if I had one, yeah, was 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 just to you know to, um, you know. Look hard, basically. Well, and, and oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. well, I, I sorry to cut you off. I, I was just curious because um, hopefully you won't think this is tacky, but I'm I'm curious. You know, as a as a freelance writer myself, also as someone who's been in journalism for a while. Um, I mean, you mentioned a couple spells where you were kind of full time freelance, and um, I'm just curious to hear sort of like what were the what were the rates back then, and uh, you know, was it difficult to support yourself doing stuff like this full time? Um, like how much how much work did you typically have to do to be able to make ends meet? Um, I don't really recall, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, what I what I was being paid, um, I I do recall that. Um, that the times was you know it was it was significantly more than I had ever received. I think Charles uh, told me it was about a thousand per assignment, but I may be misremembering, or <laughs> he yeah, may have been that, talking that, about something else. That could have that could that sounds roughly correct. Yeah, that's what Charles said. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah that 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 sounds roughly correct to me, at, at least roughly, um, but. Uh, that was that was considerably more than uh, than I, I think I, I think for a standard review in those those days um, it it varied a good deal. I, I mean, places had different different budgets, so sometimes it would be you know seventy five bucks, but um, other times it would be you know two hundred or or two fifty or something like that, and and somewhere in between. Um, uh it was you know the time but i one of the things that i noticed and this is this is one of the reasons that i was uh less than happy in management is that um one of the things that i i i just i noted was that uh they had uh I want. I'm. I'm looking for context for this, um, but uh, let's put this. I was. I was in management around the time that rates, I think, started going down because they went because they went down at uh, at, uh, at at the. At the site that I was uh, editing, um, initially, when when I was when PC games folded and I was basically left there by myself to sort of put the site together based on what was left, um, 
I was able to pay, I think, about 250 per review. Um, and you know, I had a, a pretty good staff of, uh, of reviewers at the time, but um, I th- believe we had to cut that by basically to about a third of that. Um, and that, you know, it, it's hard to keep writers when, when you know, when the money's not there. Well, it's, uh, I think it's hard to keep writers of a certain caliber, certainly. Well, yes, yes. Y- yeah. Uh, just, just so. And, um, but, uh, let me, let me think. Sure. Um, So it, this was around the period where I, I mean I've, I've never I never had difficulty myself making making money from you know from writing about games, but I don't know that I would if I were to go back to it now. Uh, you know I, I've. Um, I can't say that I'm well connected, but those connections that I do have, uh, you know, people people mention to me that uh, they're simply not paid well. Uh, yeah, I can <laughs> I can vouch for that. I mean, many of the rates you mentioned, uh, I think getting. I mean, I think honestly, you're lucky if you do get two hundred and fifty dollars, like for a review. I think what's much more. Like I think you're lucky if you can get 150. I think what's more reasonable, or I don't even think it's reasonable. What's more typical is, you know, 50 bucks, maybe 25. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't doubt that. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I, I rather expect that. Um, I, I, are, are people, you know, being asked to write for free, and you know, yes, you keep the game. Uh, I mean, I wonder how much, how often this happened in in your era with it. Where, I mean, I assume you were getting games through PR companies, but sometimes the expectation is that you'll buy the game yourself as well. Now today, well, that's that's in many cases what I had to do in the early days. Yeah. Because you know, I didn't have I didn't have a an easily recognizable name, uh, and. Uh, so if if I wanted to uh, uh, you know find find something uh, especially it was especially important I think in the Amiga market because a lot of the Amiga games didn't come out in this country uh, you know or didn't come out quickly they were they were imports uh, and so. To sort of stay on top of things, you had to you had to stay on top of a what was essentially a, a foreign market, and there were you know there were places that that support supported that extensively, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but uh, my expenses you know early on were were not inconsiderable because I was I was paying for you know I was paying for for the games in in some part. And over time, uh, places would, uh, uh, you know, begin to recognize my name and and, and send me things. Uh, but that took a while. Well, what do you and, think? Uh, eventually, you wind up drowning in it, you know. What do you? Th- I mean, what do you think um, suffers as a result of um, you know rates continually sinking and it being very hard to to hold on to? You know, talented critics, talented writers, talented journalists. What do you think suffers in the space of video games as a result of that? That's hard to say, Dave, because I'm just uh, as I've as I've mentioned to you in the past. I'm right. just so I'm so unplugged, so I I don't really know what's going on. I uh, I used to uh, sort of you know st- st- stay involved. By by checking you know some websites, but not so, or or and forums, but not so much anymore. I just uh, 
you know, but my my concern would be is that if you if you're not employing people who are experienced who know something about <coughs> who, who, and <coughs> excuse me um you know people who know something of the history um there are limits to what one can do um you know you 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 the risk the the risk if if you if you can't if you can't pay your writers properly is, is that you're going to get inexperienced people who who are happy just to to write for uh, for um, you know for the exposure. Yeah, and there's, you know there's, there's there's nothing wrong with that. They will gain experience. They'll become you know better through the process. But it's um, you know I mean. A movie reviewer typically is, is someone who who has a, a history uh, with movies and with with criticism and with, with writing. Um, um, if yeah. bear with me just one sec, David. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Um, again, um, I'm, I'm I'm reluctant to sound like I know what I'm talking about here because <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't really. Um, my, you know, um, after 2007-ish, um, uh, I began to. Um, a lot of my time was involved looking after my dad, and I moved. Beginning, beginning then, I, I moved away from from the uh, you know from games and, and games coverage just of necessity. So I don't really you know I don't really know what the problems are, but my concern you know based just you know logically you know, uh, more than anything else would be that you can't, you know, if, 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 if you cut, if you cut back on, 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 on what you're paying people, uh, you, there, there are potentially, um, limits to what you can achieve as a re- as a result, um, mm-hmm. and I, I know I'm I'm speaking in very sort of broad, dumb terms, but uh, my you know writers need to live too. <laughs> That's not a dumb thing to say. I think it's a... well, it's not a dumb thing to say. It's just. It's a, but I feel so disconnected, David, and that's that's one of the things that's it's it's just important to understand is that, you know, ten essentially ten years after the fact, um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I don't I, and my concern I don't want to sound like an expert about this because I maybe I once was or maybe I was was once knowledgeable, but I'm not now. Yeah. You know, so so I'm not. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it's awkward to to um, sort of come back to this now. Uh, you know, and and I I I don't know you know just what to say on some of these scores uh, because I, I you know I'm I'm so it's so distant. Yeah, it feels. And, it feel, I mean, um, 
just to be just to be clear and I and I guess to fill in fill in the gaps a little, mm-hmm. um after the times, um I wound up writing books. Um but there was something of a gap, I think, before that happened. I think until two thousand two or thereabouts. Uh, until roughly 2007. It was a five-year period. And I, I wrote a few more Dame Gods during that period. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, by the time the last one appeared, um, uh, my dad, with whom I was living, was, wasn't doing quite so well and needed a lot of, a lot of you know, attention. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, you know, for myself and my brother, that wound up, that wound up, you know, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't just, you know, cooking and cleaning. I was, I was also, uh, um, you know, sort of being, you know, friend, psychologist, uh, you know, son, yeah, uh, uh, you know. Whatever, uh, and that's that was a full time job, or it, it quickly became a full time job. Well, I so. mean, if it, um, I mean, if it helps you feel less awkward, and I know we've talked before about you know this project and what I'm doing and these conversations. I mean, the intent is to not sort of pose to you questions about the bleeding edge, you know, conflicts or friction in the space, but rather more. You know, as 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 we were just talking about with writers, uh, you know, they're they're one piece of the puzzle when it comes to just what the world of video games is like. And um, yeah, as we just said, you know, just if if as pay goes down, people are not really able to stick around or be as immersed in it or be as professionally engaged with it for you know maybe as long as they'd like to be. And so. For me, it's more just um, scooping up these perspectives and just sort of, you know, exploring the ways that your life overlapped with doing this work uh, less than, you know, what do you think of, uh, you know, something that just happened today or yesterday? Okay. Um, Well. If that helps. (laughs) Well, uh, could could you put it in the form of a question? Well, no, that wasn't a question so much as me telling you the, to, to hopefully take some of the pressure off of, uh, you know, your feeling that you need to be answering in a specific way or relating yeah, it to it, today. It, it, it's just I'm, I'm I'm sort of I'm so so late to the game, you know. In, yeah. With the way the way it feels these days. Um, well, let me ask you this then. Um, uh, because, you know, we talked a lot about you doing writing, but not so much the, the content of the writing. I wonder if this is related where, um, you know, you mentioned about video game violence, and there are not a lot of ways to sort of uh, express your individuality in a game. And, um, you know, what I always found interesting and sort of actually was kind of pioneering about your style is that you wrote about video games in a experiential way as opposed to just writing about products with features and uh i mean where where did that style come from well um i i I wasn't really aware of it i suppose um the um i mean that's like the that's like the popular style that like everybody is doing today but, pe- but people, so I've, but so people, I've heard. <laughs> people think but, it's people uh, think people think it's new. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that I don't know that it was that it was uh, all that different. Are, are you talking about the the time stuff or or? Uh, yeah, I guess I guess specifically the time stuff. But well, uh, I don't know that the time stuff was all that different than what I was doing before. Yeah. Really. Um, I mean, it wasn't. There was this wasn't a, a sort of a concerted decision or anything or or even something that I was aware of. I was right. just I was just uh, you know the, the the times gave me pretty much free reign as I, as I mentioned and um, it seemed more useful to talk about the experience 
um, rather than, you know, man, bear, bear with, I'm sorry, David, I just, it's okay. uh, there's a lot of noise here, um, which maybe you can't hear, but I've got a bird screaming. Oh, I heard, the, I heard a chirping or a beeping, so it's yeah. fine. I thought it was a fire uh, alarm, maybe. It's, it's um, It seemed, it's always seemed to me that, you know, this is, it's, it's different from, playing a game is different from reading a book or, or going out to see a movie or, you know, um, because the path that you adopt is there is the opportunity for you really to make the game your own in some sense. Um, whereas the movie or the book, I mean, you may dis- it's true that you can discover something new every time you see a movie or read a book. But um, that is just, but it's nevertheless, it's a fixed property to some extent. It's so is a game, true. But um, if there are enough options, enough size, enough are you know interesting intelligence there are ways ways for it to become your own and thus a report of an experience as opposed to a I'm sorry I'm not I'm not doing this very well but based Basically, it seemed it, 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 it's always seemed to me that that this is a, you know it's a sorry David I'm, I'm you would you would think I'd be more on top of this but I'm not um, let me it's just okay. let me just let me just take a moment and I'll I'll, I'll rephrase a little bit um, I guess the best, the best and simple, simplest way to say this would be would be just that, you know, uh, no, there wasn't any sort of concerted plan. It just it just seemed a natural way to write about games, and I don't think, you know, um, and and the times gave me enough space that I was able to do that. Uh, you know, in a, in a lot of reviews. Um, Especially early, early in my career, for Amiga World and PC games and so on, it was a, it was pretty tight. I mean, the word count, you know, and there there were there are you can't do much with with 200 words except sort of you know give give the overall, you know, um, it, when the Times was giving me, as I recall, I think I think. 1250 to to 1500 maybe a little less than that maybe maybe closer to a thousand but mm-hmm. nevertheless that's that was enough space to to uh stretch out a little bit you know to to uh n- not to not to simply uh you know give a, a recitation of features but to 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 talk about you know what had happened to me? You know, I installed this game. You know, um, <laughs> and I—I I don't know whether it was successful. I—I um, I, I, some people I know liked it. You know, but. Um, What can I say? I'm... Yeah, no, I was I was curious as well. I mean, what sort of feedback you got um, on that approach? You know, whether it's from colleagues or editors or readers, uh, what's, what sort of response did it get? I don't. 
I don't recall. I mean, I do recall hearing hearing from uh, the folks at Robot Street Gang. Uh, right. With uh, Gus, was, which was Gus's uh, site with uh, I think uh, Mike Benson and Jordan Raphael. I think mm-hmm. those were the they were the principals of the site, and I, I know I know they liked some of the some of the time pieces that I did, but generally speaking, you know, um, you, you may be assuming a little bit that I get more feedback than I actually got. Oh, I'm not. I'm not assuming. I mean, I've, I've, uh, you know, it's been my profession as well for the last uh, eleven some years, and I, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, you may have gotten letters, which I have only gotten a few, um, but I, I know the nature of it, where you really, if it almost feels like you're just sort of sending things off into the abyss, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I wasn't and, assuming anything, but I wanted to make sure I asked about it at least. Yeah, I, I I recall, you know, I recall the odd things. I recall I recall, you know, um, I, I I recall writing a review which used the Latin cum, uh, which means with uh, C U M, and um, the magazine uh, got a complaint that I was referring to uh, semen. <laughs> <laughs> in the New York Times. I'm sorry. In, uh, which publication was that in? That was in the New York Times. No, no, that was that was in a different publication. Okay, that's well. I would have been surprised if it was the New York Times and they got that reaction. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the Times, and uh, the, I, I did get one email when I was at the Times um, accusing me of uh, being bought and paid for because I had liked some game that. Uh, that uh, I guess the letter writer didn't care for. Um, uh, but, you know, there wasn't really much. I mean, my my email did appear at the bottom of each column, but, you know, I, I didn't hear from very many people. It was just, you know, a handful. And it, so... <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, uh, that, that's that's some of the reason that I'm 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 hesitant to to offer you know too much speculation about what people think, or or you know what might be done differently because it, it just I'm, I wasn't hearing back. As you said, I was basically you know sending things off into the ether, and yeah. uh, you know if if there was a if there was a uh, a problem, I guess I'd hear about it, but generally speaking, no, no. It do you was, remember? It, it do you remember fine. what the first? Do you remember what the first email you got about your writing? Mm. Well, I, I mean, I should I should clarify. I asked because you were working in the era where I think, as you mentioned, you know, the internet started to become more prominent, um, and things shifted from being just in print to also online. Trying to think. Um, no, to be honest with you, I, yeah, I'm sure that there were that there were emails back in the day. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm just not recalling, you know, a, 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 I'm not really recalling any. Um, I you know my 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 recollections from those days are. Um, I, I, I can recall. I recall the mistakes that I made, and <laughs> and you know the and the things that I would like to would would prefer to have done differently. But um, there's just not that much that I that, that I can offer. I, I mean, I, I mentioned mentioned the one about you know the Latin cum uh, <laughs> because that that, well, it's memorable. that comes to mind. Yeah, and 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 the accusation when I was at the Times that I was somehow in the employee of the uh, of the uh, the game uh, the game publisher, uh, you know, struck me as unusual. I, I don't think I'd ever heard that before. Well, that's a that's a common and uh, I mean, still even today, a, a persistent attitude. Um, that I mean, I I think I suppose to a certain extent. 
um, you know, because publishers buy advertising from some publications, that there is some symbiosis that's um, that occurs. But I don't know why people, and I don't want to speculate either about why there's this assumption that one has to do with the other or about an individual's opinion. Uh, that people was just have, from a... People have a, never been particularly accepting of other people's opinions. Um, <laughs> the, 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 That's the, true. Notion, the notion that someone can hold a different set of priorities or, or feelings or reactions from oneself um, you know, it it doesn't see it doesn't seem to occur to people, and and um, you know, and I guess we're 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 visiting that now again, you know, yes. uh, after the election, uh, where the country seems you know bitterly divided. 